Hiya, Paul is the best for UK here. This video is just to show a little brief demonstration of how GEOS runs on the C64 Maxi and the C64 Mini uh, using uh, the latest firmware update. So uh, thank you for watching. So at the time of the recording of this video, what you're going to do is you're going to want to update the C64 firmware if you haven't already. So go to the Retro Games website. You can see introducing version 1.61, it adds the mouse support, which is what we want. And it also adds supports for the mouse and gamepad, which are the upcoming products for the Amiga Mini range, which is going to be very cool as well. So if you haven't got 161.bin, I highly recommend you download this. So download that, put it on your FAT32 USB pen, go through the normal procedure of updating the C64. In my system I've got a rapid wireless dongle complete with the mouse to go with it. This is just a 2.4 GHz cheap mouse. Many other mice should work. Okay, so here we go. Here is Geos loaded up. You can see joysticks controlling it. There, that's the standard uh, way of doing it, of course. What I'm going to try and do is get this uh, wireless mouse that I uh, talked about earlier working on it. Uh, just, a, just a bog standard Rapu wireless mouse. The dongle's already plugged in the C64. So, the first thing we're going to do is press control key or CBM key on the C64 and uh, change it using the joystick to COM1531 and press OK still using the joystick you can see how robotic the movements are with the joystick And now as you can see, after a brief load from the virtual floppy disk, we have full wireless mouse support. Now of course this will work with a standard wired mouse, you can just go and pick one up from Poundland or something if you haven't got a spare. Uh, it uses the uh, HID uh, driver I think, that's compatible with almost any Windows compatible mouse, so as long as it's USB it should theoretically work. And as you can see, we have got full mouse support in Geos. How cool is that? Now here in the UK, I had a uh, Commodore 64 with a data set I would have never have even expected or dreamed of having a graphical user interface like this on a Commodore 64. So to me, this is really impressive. You can just like go into prefs, just like a Canon and Amiga or something like a PC with Windows or something. And it's just, it would have blew me away back in the day. So yeah, this, especially with the mouse support is just amazing. I, it, I, I have used Geos prior to this video, but it just feels right on this actual like sort of setup. If you're wondering what I'm doing with the monitor, it's an old VGA monitor. I've got a HDMI to VGA adapter plugged in, so it sort of like suits the size of the Commodore 64 Maxi quite well. It's an old Redisys monitor from about 2003. Now, to change disks, I'm sure you're wondering because GEOS is on multiple disks. First, make sure you've loaded the GEOS base file using basic interpreter rather than the uh, GEOS launch option because, sorry, the, uh, the retro games launch option because it won't work using the launch option. You must load it manually by the load colon star colon comma eight comma one. Once you've done that, you can change the disks at well. And yeah, here we go. Here's the applications diskette. Now, one thing to also notice is these applications, these diskette, these diskette images you've got mounted also support save. So it's like having a, a cupboard full of disks, if you like. And uh, yeah, you can go and create your own word processing documents. 
so he's Geo right and as you can see I just find it so impressive that you've got an 8-bit computer running a GUI in the first place but to have this mouse support wow I remember back in the day I used something called Mini Office and just a very primitive word processor. This Geos has got like a, almost like a professional business GUI suite with different fonts and stuff. It's just so impressive. I am really blown away with this. I think the main reason why I haven't really explored Geos before now is because of the lack of mouse support but it just it for some reason having the mouse support really makes it so much more usable it's i know the joystick was more robotic and it, i don't know there's something about using the mouse on it And of course we've got a paint package all in 64k memory on top of GEOS operating system and it's a fully functioning paint package. Do you remember Saracen Paint or Advanced Art Studio, one of some of the uh, prim more primitive ones? This, is, this looks more like Windows Paint and it's really impressive that it's running on a uh, Commodore 64 as well as it is. I mean the mouse input is lag free and i'm sure it would have been on the actual machine as well and uh, yeah it's this is amazing one thing to mention about this paint package is it's not hard to draw it's click once to draw and then click off to draw off to a release to draw if you understand what i mean so one click on the mouse draw your paint another click on the mouse stop drawing that's why i did that mistake up there so yeah this is really good and I'd like to thank you for watching the video and uh, if you want to know how to do this there's, there's Facebook forums but also if you want to know how to do it just ask me in the comments and I'm sure I can help you out. Uh, it also works like I said earlier in the on the uh, C64 Mini. You could do it with a keyboard plugged into that one to use it better of, of course for obvious reasons but yeah thank you for watching and goodbye.